What is going on everyone and welcome to a new video. Today we're loading some very special film. It's some Portra 160 which was expired in 2008 and as you can see it is a 220 roll of film. This format is not available anymore and you can just find expired film but it comes with some advantages and the main reason is that with this film you can actually get double the shots, which on this Fuji is very nice. So instead of the usual four exposures, you can actually take eight. To convert the Fuji from 120 film to 220 film, you have to do a couple of steps. First of all, you need to turn the back of the camera and there's a little slider that allows you to flip the back and you will see a 220 number on it. And then there's a tiny toggle on the top to go from 120 to 220. Today we're gonna do some kind of experiment bringing my beloved Fuji G617 on the top of a very high mountain. We started fairly early and the first part is a road where you can actually drive the car if you're allowed to. Now, since we are not and Luca has a very nice e-bike we decided to basically tow my bike all the way up to gain some time and to spare a little bit of our legs. And as you can see, it worked quite good. His e-bike brought us all the way up and we then started hiking from the mountain pass. From here, it's about 1200 meters of altitude gain, maybe something more and quite a lot of walking to do. But you might be wondering, why on planet Earth did you decide to bring such a huge camera on the top of a mountain and precisely at 3500 meters above the sea level? Well, I do have a project, a very special one, one that is very close to my heart that I want to accomplish. And in order to do that, I really have to test both the camera and the gear that I'm using to bring it where it needs to be. So I decided to call my friend Luca, he's an experienced mountain guide, in order to lead me on the top of the mountain. And the cool part is that there's a very big glacier just under it. For this video, it wasn't possible to bring all my usual gear. So instead of my normal GoPro, I thought, well, let's try out this 360 camera so that I can try to make a little bit more of shot variety. So it wasn't quite a good warm up for the legs and we arrived at the mountain pass that connects Italy to Austria. Top. <laughs> now the Schrammacher, as you can tell by its name, is already in the Austrian territory but you can access it quite easily from the Italian side, like we did. We then started hiking, the sun was up, it was pretty warm, but the view was just amazing. First, we had to walk through this boulder field where a few marmots had their home and you could definitely hear a few of them whistles while we were hiking. Now, Luca, my mountain guide, is a big man. He's very tall and his legs are super long. It was quite a struggle to keep up with them, but it was a nice challenge and I started feeling the flow of the walk. We then switched from the mountain meadows to a very big rock field and we then arrived to a little alpine lake which is formed by the melting ice of the glacier. This is the first stop we did and it was also a good moment to wear crampons and to get the ice axe out of the bag. This is when things get serious. For safety, when you are on a glacier, it's always good to wear a harness and to be with someone that can guide you through this environment. 
Luca brought all his gear, including a nice rope, which we tied together, and then we started moving up. I was blown away by my first steps on the ice. It felt like entering another world, and it was definitely something that hyped me up. Now, when you walk on a glacier with crampons and being tied to a mountain guide, it really feels like you're in another space, like something like a video game or even in proper space. You feel like an astronaut, I guess. And while we were walking, Luca actually taught me a lot of stuff about how to read the conditions, or how to be safe in this environment. As I'm more of a winter guy when it comes to ice and snow, and I've never done this kind of stuff in summer. We then arrived Hang to on. the upper part of the glacier and you could definitely see some crevasses around. And this is where I tried to film the upper part of this, where I had to use crampons and the ice axe. But as always, GoPros and cold doesn't mix and the battery just died. It was then sufficient to just put it in one of my chest pockets to let it warm up. And after that, it started again like nothing happened. Now at this point the glacier was officially finished and Let's go. we had a little bit of a scramble on some and rock to, to get to the crest. Non sempre stato un buon placchista. Soprattutto di roba che cede. The crest was the most exposed area top, top, top. But as a climber it didn't really bother me too much we just made sure Whoa. that both of us were very careful about the environment around us and that the rope was ready to stop the fall the view here was already amazing i could feel my legs burning and my shoulder a little bit sore from the backpack i was bringing with me but overall, I was so immersed into the experience that I couldn't care less. After overtaking a little bit of a climbing part, when you had to basically climb a vertical section of granite, we started pushing and I was very excited to get to the top. Le pinzate tecniche. Now, the plan was to make the top and then evaluate, first of all, the view from the top, but also how my body reacted to the altitude and the physical effort. I was feeling actually great, and while climbing up, I saw a few compositions I wanted to photograph, so we decided to make a little bit of a rest, eat something, enjoy the view, and finally, finally, start to take some pictures. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, the oh, first composition geez. I tried to achieve was photographing the glacier from our side pointing directly to the other side. Now, 
I don't know what didn't work about this. Maybe I loaded the film a little bit too further because this is the result I got and there's basically nothing on it. The next composition though was a little bit further down and as you can see there's a very wide view on some of the surrounding peaks, there's a very nice lake on the bottom and the colorful sky with a few white clouds made for a very nice backdrop. I also tried the vertical composition on this which sounds a little bit crazy but I did want to test the camera in different positions After I took those photos we then backtrack a little bit and we arrive where the glacier actually starts. So this is where the last time the GoPro didn't record me using ice axes and crampons so this time I was very motivated to do it again and to record that as it's very interesting and maybe not so usual for a photographer in general. So here you can see Luca is belaying me from the top, being sure that everything is okay. And I just had to basically walk back, like pointing the, the crime paws into the hard snow and following with the ice axe for balance. On the way back we stopped for a little bit of safety training where he explained me how to stop in case of a fall. Now this is a pretty extreme fall, you won't fall like this, you won't get to this speed, but it's good to train for the worst in just in case. Prove di scivolata estrema. Al limite! We then walk back down to the lake where we wore all the gear before and as I was walking down after all those hours I was really really curious about the results of this expired As field. we got to the lake I noticed a little iceberg right in the middle of the lake and I decided to take another shot. Expired film has a very distinct character to it some people love it, some people hate it. There's a lot of grain, it's not 
that sharp even though I know this camera is very sharp and all of these are good characteristic for what I'm looking for it might sound crazy but sometimes you don't really want the best image quality and the best sharpness in the world sometimes you can also experiment with something different all in all it was a 10 hour mission and I felt so grateful for what I learned and what we were able to achieve and even though these photos weren't planned at all when it comes to lighting and composition I do like them for the memory they bring with them so if you made it this far thank you for watching thank you for being part of this channel I would like to thank again every single subscriber that has taken part in the growth of this YouTube channel it means the world to me so please remember to like this video leave a comment with what you think and I will see you in the next video until the next time ciao